Thank you for the uh, good reception and uh, awesome to see so many people have turned out for this. Uh, when I first submitted for the talk, I was like, ah, it'd be great, like, you know, and then I actually got confirmed for the talk and I was like, whoa. And then I forgot about it and then two weeks later, um, it was time to give the talk, like, you know, and uh, now it's all a bit more real. So, anyway, we'll give it a shot, okay? And uh, today what we're going to be covering is um, OAuth 2 and basically what I'm going to do is give it introduction and overview of OAuth 2 and then we can do a uh, participation about midway through and then afterwards um, I'll show you it working in an, ex in an existing project. Um, so yeah, pretty cool, okay? Alright, so um, my name is Okay. I'm a freelance developer, was a freelance developer, got a, a job in um, InFlight uh, as a mobile uh, developer and uh, yeah, that was good. All right, so let's jump into it. Okay, so what is OAuth? Uh, actually, uh, has everybody used OAuth? Put up your hands if you haven't actually used OAuth. Nice. Yeah, like three people. Okay, perfect. So yeah, this is going to be a good talk. Um, so what is OAuth? Well, OAuth is an open standard for access delegation, commonly used as a way for internet users uh, to grant websites uh, to order, or to grant websites or applications to their information on other websites without giving them passwords. That was a mouthful. Okay, but the advantage of this is we don't actually have to store the user's passwords in our database, which is great. This is one of the many um, pros that we're going to see in this, and it's very accessible for the user. <laughs> All right, so. What are the benefits of OAuth? Well, it's an easy sign of process for the user. If the user is already authenticated on Facebook, say in the browser, it's literally just three clicks, and that's you clicking the button to say log in with Facebook. Okay, so it's it's pretty easy. Okay, also security, you don't have to worry about passwords and hashing passwords and all this good stuff. And then also third-party apps, so apps that we develop as those developers, um, can gain detailed information about the user pretty quickly and uh, you know know what they want for breakfast, see where they go to sleep, and uh, yeah, you can get pretty cozy with it. No, I'm a joke, but we can get a lot of information pretty quickly. Alright, so also um, in 2016, mobile and tablet usage has passed um, desktop usage according to uh, Stack Counter in mid uh, 2016. So again, logins are difficult on your phone, like entering all the data and stuff, so single click logins are actually really, really good. Alright, so um, OAuth consists of five main parts, right? These parts are known as actors, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to explain the different parts. It might seem, you might feel like, Jesus, that's a like, totally over-engineered uh, way of describing it, but then I'll show it to you in a way that, how it all ties together, okay? So, uh, first of all, we have the resource owner, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to refer to Shane here as the resource owner. He is the user, okay? So this is Shane over here at the front. I'm going to say, the resource owner here most likely has an account on Facebook. So, the resource owner here most, li most likely has an account on Facebook and all his resources are hosted on this server and this is his uh, resources here. So just imagine that says JSON and we're all good. Okay, so this would be like his image, his profile images, his videos and his, uh, you know, bio details, his date of birth, all that kind of crap. Okay, so resource owner, owner of the resources, um, then we have the client, which is the third-party app that me and you guys build, and girls build. Um, so this is our third-party client. The OAuth server is responsible for authenticating the user with Facebook, and then authorizing, getting authorization from the user, so that the client can use the resources. Okay? Yeah, so that's pretty much it. So let's have a look at that in action. <coughs> okay, so OAuth 2 has different flows, okay? So we'll have a look at the most complete flow in this, and then uh, I'll show you 
the, the different flows later on. Okay, this is basically just a map to see uh, which flow do you want to use, okay? So if you start off here and say, is the client the resource owner? So um, does the client own the resources on the phone or whatever? So this could be like someone taking photos and he just wants to uh, have his photos um, protected and for no one else to sign in. Uh, and, and not close on a third party system. Well then you can go with this OAuth flow. It's called the client credential graph. Okay, the, the next one and the most complete one, the one that we'll be doing um, at, for, for this talk is the um, authorization code graph, okay? And what this is, basically you have like your traditional client on the front end. Um, it's not a single page application, okay? Uh, it's, it's maybe something like, you know, a, a Django website or, you know, Express and you're just returning the views, you know, at, at each request. And then, uh, yeah, we have different implementations of the uh, OAuth flow. And the implicit grants, this is the one that we'll be using for single page applications such as, say, Angular, React, or even um, Ionic. If, if, if anybody's worked with Ionic, it's a nice wrapper for uh, native devices. Okay, cool. So, yeah, so this is the one that we're going to look at. It's the authorization code grant. It's the most complete OAuth flow. And every other single flow after this is just a slightly different implementation. So if we go through this one, you get the overview of everything and how, how it works. And then... Uh, it's, it's really just a simple, like you might take out a step or whatever, and then you're into different flows, okay? So we'll take a look at that now. Okay, cool. So stage one, what we want to do is uh, we are going to authenticate the user with Facebook and then get the user's permission to uh, send those uh, resources to the third party clients. Okay, cool. So here we go. You can see uh, the, the stage map here. And first of all, you're on the client and you're, you, get on, you log on to your app and you click log in with Facebook. Okay, great. So a request goes to the OAuth server. This could be Facebook's OAuth server. And what it will do is we'll turn a browser window and display a login screen to the resource owner. Okay? So next, what the resource owner does is he enters, he or her enters his credentials and as long as they're correct, the OAuth server will basically do a, a check here and we'll check with Facebook, hey, are these uh, credentials correct? Okay, perfect. So then the OAuth server is going to send back, hey, do you really want to allow um, this third party client uh, access to these resources and they'll list out the resources that you want so that'll be like profile information image age gender and you could literally just keep going on you know all right perfect so the, the user just agrees they really want to go on to the app and that's fine so then what the OAuth server does it hands back a code grant okay and this code grant is used for authenticating the client because we now know that the user is the user because they entered the correct details into Facebook. Now we need to basically find out, well, who is this app? What is this app? Is this the correct app? Okay? Cool. So stage two, yeah, we're going to authenticate the device and then get an access token. All right, perfect. So we get our code grant here. And what we do is, in a traditional OAuth flow, what you do is you just post the token. And then you set your, uh, you put your code grants in the body and you give it a grant type authorization. And then you basically, this here is, would be your app ID and your app secret, base64 code, okay? So, but with, with Google, or sorry, with Facebook, it's actually a get request and you send that in the URL parameters, which we'll have a look at later. Okay, cool. So, as long as that's correct and the OAuth server validates it, what you get back is an access token. Okay, great. This access token is now the ticket for 
the device to basically do whatever it wants. It can go access all those, um, all those, uh, sorry, you, you totally distracted me there, that was terrible. <laughs> no, I'm joking. But basically, anybody who has this access to it, you want to be really careful with it because um, that will basically validate you as that user, okay? All right, next, next up. Let's go get those resources off Facebook, okay? Uh, yeah, it's a nice little animation of a token there at the top. And, um, okay, so what we do is we are going to access the Facebook um, Graph API. And if you just want to get back standard details, such as like the user's email and ID, you just hit this endpoint, um, the graph.facebook.com uh, forward slash me with uh, a get request and you, you attach um, the token as uh, in the authorization header, okay? Perfect, all right, so that's, that goes off to the resource server. You send that directly to the resource server. The resource server sends that back to the all server server and says, hey, is this, is this token valid? And it'll go, oh, and it'll go check, and it'll check, and check, and it happens pretty quickly. And it'll say, yeah, sure, that, that's correct. Okay, perfect. And the resource server says, great, uh, I'm going to get this, uh, the resources, and then it's going to send those resources back, and then straight over to the client, right here, and then boom, your app populates on sign in or whatever with all your awesome content that you want, that you want to extract and put into your device. Okay? So yeah, so that's pretty much like an overview of that. I thought it was going to be like death by slides, but maybe it was all right. Um, so do you guys want to join in and we can start doing some terminal commands, curl commands to the Facebook API endpoints, okay? So if you want, you can go to this link here. Uh, this is my GitHub account, but it's just a page on my GitHub account. And you can go there, copy the text, put it into your IDE, right? And um, yeah, and then just follow along, okay? So I'll leave that up there for a minute, and uh, whoever is following along can I do so. Cool. Are we all good? Let me know. Yeah, okay. Everybody's sorry if yes? Yeah, yeah. Like a bunch. Cool. Let's do it. Alright, uh, so uh, next up, what we're going to do is we are going to jump over to, um, who here has the, the Facebook account set up, the developer account set up? Everybody? Yeah, most people? Yeah, uh, most people following on? Okay, you'll, you'll need that, okay? So, I'm, I'm just gonna show the complete flow of just literally going in and getting these um, uh, secret tokens and whatever, okay? So I'll just leave this here because I need to use both hands. Uh, right, so we'll just close that off and bring up, it's like super small, let me see. Okay, cool, so. Okay, yeah, so this is basically where you go to set up your apps and, uh, and do everything and, and create your accounts. So this is where you can go and do that. Um, you, can, you can set up everything from here. Um, I'm not going to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm just go, going to log into my app right here. So just hold on one sec. And I'll just jump over to this and there we go. Can everybody see this? How's that for um, on the screens? Is that okay? Bigger. Bigger? That's good enough. <laughs> yes. 
it's too much. It's good enough. Yeah. All right. Cool. 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 All right. Good stuff. So. All right. Uh, and everybody has the sheet. Everybody got the sheet that went on. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. All right. So what we're going to do here is I'm just going to get a full screen. Um, we are going to go into my apps. And uh, so this is where you probably want to register your own app. Um, if you haven't done so, just click new app over here and um, register your app, okay? Alright, so, and then once you click new app, just literally select the dashboard because it's going to try and sell you like a lot of things, just, just, just get rid of that, you don't need that, okay? So, um, so what we're going to do here, what we, what we really need is... Okay, what you need is your app ID here, and you need your app secret, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to follow along on this sheet here, and just go ahead and do it. Okay, so here we are, uh, we have our client ID, perfect. And I was having issues getting with that other thing, so I'm just going to copy my client secret here, and uh, that's that's this right here, okay? And then what we want to do is we want to register a redirect URI, okay? This will all make sense in a little bit, but let's just just go forward with it. Okay, see where it says uh, your site URL? We're going to copy that here, and then we're going to paste that in as the redirect URI right here, okay? Yeah, perfect. And then what we want to do is we just want to URL encode that uh, redirect URI. So you can just literally go on and just say um, uh, encode, Encode this. Make sure it has a forward slash at the end. If it doesn't, it's not going to work. Okay. So what we want to do is just encode it, and then copy this out right here. Copy it out. Jump back to um, our sheet. Paste that in. Okay. How's everybody doing? Are we good. Okay, yeah, so, so you, can, you can just follow along with these steps as well, right? So, okay, what we want to do is we want to get the authorization endpoint, or we want to hit the authorization endpoint, and we need to provide the details that, or the credentials that we just picked off um, Facebook there when we registered our app, okay? So first, what we want to do is we want to get the client ID right here, and then Right after you see uh, these query parameters, client ID equals, and then client ID, paste that in there, okay? And then we go to the redirect, um, redirect URI, URL encoded. So just after that, after the equal sign, take that out and grab this one right here, okay? Paste that in. Okay, perfect. All right. So now that we have that, we're actually just going to paste that straight into the browser. Okay. So or into the uh, yeah browser right here. So I hit that and we press enter, and we get nothing. Okay, perfect. But we actually did get something. We got our authorization code grant. Okay. And where we got that is where we got that is just here in the URL, right? See uh, where it says, it says code here, and then there's just this big long string. Well, we can copy that. I'm just going to make sure I have it here. One sec. Copy that. And now what we can do is we can go down to the next uh, stage in the sheet and paste that in. And we got our code. So that's sweet. Happy days. 
Uh, next, what we, what we want to do is we want to get our OAuth token. Alright, so here what we're going to do is we are going to um, send our OAuth token here. So just let me see one sec. Authorization code, access token, redirect to bureau. Okay, cool. Access token. Then what we're going to do here is we're going to send our redirect URI right here. So um, let me see this. I'm just literally just going to copy everything out because it's so easy to make a mistake with this. Um, right, there we go. And then also we obviously want to get our redirect URI. Let me see. Super easy. And there we go, redirect URI. We're all encoded. Paste that in. Cool. And next, what we're going to do is we're going to add in our client ID. So we got that up above. So we just go back to our sheet here. And so you go back to your sheet there, get, get the client ID. And then what we want to do is we want to hit that endpoint. Okay, so client ID, client ID, paste that in, and then we just get our client secret right here as well. Client secret, and then also our code. So this is our authorization code grant that we got. All right, cool. And if everything went really well, and there was no mistakes, no typos, no nothing, we should be able to make a request and get an access token back. So let's do that. So next up, what we're going to do is we are just going to go into the terminal and send a, a curl request to the OAuth server. Okay, so I'm just going to paste that in, and then what we get back is we get back an error code. Lovely. Okay, so let's just give that one more shot and uh, we'll see what's going on here. We're going to just need to do this. Alright, okay, so that might make sense. and I'm looking for code, and there we go. Okay, that's what I think the problem was, so let's go back and hit that endpoint again. Okay, cool, so we got our access token, happy days, all right? I, I know it's really hard to see, but that's, uh, I, I actually don't know how to make this bigger, but just um, know that if you're following along, you'll get the same result as, lo as long as it's all putting it correctly. So, and what we do is we copy the access token right here. And then what we want to do is go back to our sheet again. And then we paste in our access token here. And I know this takes a long time, what I'm doing here, but this all happens in a split second. And um, obviously when we're doing this uh, with our code. Okay, cool. So then all we need to do is just uh, paste in the access token right here. And then what we do is copy that and we jump back to the terminal. Now we're hitting the Facebook URL or graph endpoint and it's just going to give us back standard details. And now you can see, cool, we got the information, name, own cane, ID, and yeah, that's it. So we, we didn't ask for much, we just literally said, hey, just send us whatever, okay? So what we can do then afterwards is we can specify some extra parameters right here. Uh, if we just copy, say, this, and then put that at the end of the URL um, query, or add the same as a query right here. Copy, paste, and let me see. Oh, uh, try accessing Facebook. Okay, so I don't, I don't have the privileges to that. But, so what you can do is you can just, um, I think it's supposed to be an ant, maybe.
this, this is live coding is, is pretty intense, like I tell you. This is full on. Uh, this is like this is you know when a client comes to see your app and you're like running the app and you're like yeah this is amazing and then and then something happens you're like whoa so uh, yeah this is like one of those moments but um, good fun so we paste this in here copy all of that again and then let's uh, clear the terminal paste it in and then oh cool so there we go and um, what we I, it's impossible to see but um, what you, <laughs> it's not, you know, I, I got it. It's, 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 what's the quick way of making the text bigger on the terminal? Command plus. Command plus what? Oh, just plus. Command plus. Oh, yeah. Command plus. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It would have been helpful to, to not start. However. Um, sorry, guys. There we go. Whatever. Okay, we got it. We're, 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 in, we're, in, we're in a good territory, right? And, and that's basically the flow. So what we got back was the name, okay, we got our pictures, we got our, we got our URL, and yeah, we're, we're missing some content, but, but however. So that's, that's the flow, okay? So uh, who followed along with, with, with that? Anybody? Uh, yeah, some people did. Oh, cool, perfect. Right, so um, an example of an uh, application that is using this is one that I'm building right now. And um, what this does here is this is a dating app for a client that I'm building, so it's, or for a client. Um, let's see. Uh, there's, there's no UI, you know, but whatever. Um, <coughs> Okay, no, I just signed in and not did the, uh, didn't do the auth flow there, but I can't actually do the auth flow on an app in the browser because you need Cordova plugin. It's, it's for an iOS device. Um, but if you did, you would have got all nice information returned right here. And, uh, and you got that so easy. A, a user would have done that in, in two or three clicks. Log in with Facebook. Uh, do you want to authorize the or log yeah log in with Facebook and then log put your credentials in and then get all, uh, give the app authorization to use your um, your stuff so yeah so that that's let me see there we go and it's obviously a, it's a it's a thing of progress here um, but you can see you have some nice fun interesting stuff and yeah whatever. But uh, but yeah, that's it, guys. Um, and also we do we do nice map. We match users based on books and different things and uh, geolocation, which is kind of cool to um, say. If I go into here and say uh, I'm in Dublin now, if I want to, I can add in like say London, and uh, and then we'll get the we'll get the um, geolocations and then map people based on that geolocation and then order them based on their matches and stuff. So yeah, so kind of interesting. Uh, I, I, I worked on this project on my own. It's kind of monstrous, but, uh, but OAuth <laughs> has helped uh, along the way. So um, how are we doing for time? Because keep going. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> this is the food isn't here. This is the food. <laughs> right. I, I, yeah, yeah. So I, I, uh, I recently got I got a job actually in uh, in flight uh, last week. So I was I was I was putting off the presentation until I was like, no, I got time. This is totally okay. You know, a month ago, and then I got a job. And I was like, no, actually, time might be a factor here. And then uh, the night before last, I actually started to get worried, and then I started to do the presentation. So yeah, so it's been a, it's been a. Fun. And uh, does anybody have any questions? Yeah, it seems by the lots of things everybody's pretty familiar with. Oh, well. um, but yeah, yeah, go for it. Uh, do you find you usually just make you get all your information in one call at the start, or do you find like you have to keep your token for like query more data from Facebook later, or do you usually just one call at the start to get your login credentials? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I get all my data just at the start, but but you're like it depends what kind of implementation you want to do, like. If, if you if you want to gain a load of 
information from the user. Don't, don't request everything at the start. Just take it when you need it. Do you know what I mean? Say they come up to another party and go, hey, this person wants to know your date of birth or whatever, like, you know, and then you can do that in different stages. Um, but, but what I do is I, I, I actually get the access token from the client and then I send that through. Has anybody used a uh, passport? Um, the passport module yeah, for, for uh, validating tokens and stuff like this, yeah. So there's a Facebook um, uh, module that we can actually, uh, let me see, I actually have it here. Um, there we go. Um, so what, I, what I, I'll, just, I'll show you the passport uh, module here, right? Super messy code. Uh, I was freelancing, I had no one else to tell me otherwise, so I was really happy. Um, <laughs> But um, yeah, so uh, this is, I'll show you the routes as well because it kind of makes more sense, right? Um, right, okay. So this is just like an express app and, and, and these are all the routes um, for the app. So, you know, this is your auth, your login, your, you know, forgot passwords, whatever. Libraries because we're doing the books, right? Because we want to send the books to the database and catch all that. And then here, what you can see right here is I'm using like two different um, validation types. It's one for just normal sign-in because I'll just give them a normal JSON web token. And then the other one is the Facebook token because obviously we're getting that access token from Facebook, right? And then we're attaching it in the authorization header and then we're sending requests to a server. So what this passport module is going to do is just going to pick. It's going to, it's going to say, hey, uh, will JWT work? No, it will fail, and then it will move straight on to the next one. And it's, it's built to do that, so it's just really quick, we'll go up, and then straight on to the next one. And, um, and, yeah, and then we'll just validate uh, the user with the, with the, um, with the Facebook's uh, tokens. So that's pretty cool, I think. And uh, you, So you can see like there's a whole bunch of routes, you know, image routes, geolocation routes, uh, match routes, notifications, because this uses like Apple push notifications, so if you match on a user, you, you get the bing on your phone, and you know, that's always fun, so yeah. Um, and, uh, and then, so, what we're, what we're, this is how we can actually like authenticate the user um, in the app, because otherwise we're just getting access tokens, and, and so who knows like what's going on. But we need to verify those access tokens on the server, and that's how we can ensure that this user is actually um, validated and we know who, who they are. So, yeah, so as you saw right here on, on, the, on this side of the screen, you saw the Passport Authenticate Facebook token. This is this strategy here that I'm using right here. And so I'm passing in the client ID, remember that we did? And then the client secret, and these, this is called the scope. This is the scope of what I'm requesting back. I want to request way more, but it's actually a very long process. You have to file for like, uh, you have to send like your privacy data, you know, whatever, like, and, uh, and then all, all sorts of other things. And, and, and that's kind of like, I'm, I'm, I'm waiting to do that. But, but for now, the, all the information that I can get really is the email, the display name, the first name, the last name, the gender, and the profile image. I pick off all those details, all those, all those images or all those attributes. Um, so, so sorry, that, that access token comes in and gets passed to the Facebook strategy. Uh, then there's a module in Mongo says um, if this if this user is new, uh, create a user. If not, and, and and the unique ID is matched somewhere, just go on and validate the user. Okay. So that that's this right here: user .find or create. So find the user based on their profile ID, right? If it already exists, don't worry about it. Just pass, keep going. But, it, but if, it, if it doesn't exist, then that's a new user. And then what we do is that will just create a new user. And, uh, and then I just pick off different attributes of the user right here, and then just sort it into uh, a schema. And um, yeah, so that's, that's how that works. That's how we, how we plug it in. To the database, and then the app renders, uh, uh, pulling everything back out, and um, yeah, the app populates. So I think that was it, just in time for pizza. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>